Greetings, my name is Mike and welcome to the video. And today let's take a look at multi bindings in Dagger 2. Before we get started though, I need you to wipe away your Dagger tears. I know they're there, I can see them. But I promise you it's not going to be too bad and hopefully you'll understand why I say that after the video. Anyway, let's jump into the code. In my build script, I just have the normal Dagger dependencies over here. This is pretty much added as per their guides, so you can just follow that and you'll be fine. Just make sure you're running the latest version as well. Now, before we can understand multi bindings, we need to understand not multi bindings, which is another way of saying unique bindings. So let's take a look at this little example I have. I have an interface here called my repo, which has a method, and then I have an implementation as well. And it just returns some stuff. It's not really important at the moment. Now, to provide an instance of the interface in Dagger, you would go and write a provides method. I'm pretty sure you're familiar with this if you've written any kind of Dagger stuff. And I'm just going to write a method, say provide my repo. The return type is going to be the interface, because that's what we're going to be injecting everywhere. And then in here, you'll just return a new instance of my repo implementation like that. Pretty straightforward, and I think most of us have done that. I'm just going to go and inject that into my activity. Please don't ever do that. Please use a view model and inject the repo into there. But just for simplicity and for demo purposes, I'm going to inject it here. My repo, which is the interface type. Then I can just add a little print statement to print out what we got injected. And let's just run that quickly. My app, by the way, is literally nothing. <laughs> it's just going to be printing out some stuff to the log. So don't worry about that. But if we check logcat, we see that, okay, cool, we get a my repo implementation provided here, which is pretty much expected. That's pretty cool. All right, great. Before we move on, I wanted to just show you where you can neaten this up a bit. Instead of having a concrete method that returns stuff, I'm just going to add an abstract one with a binds annotation now instead of a provides one. So I can say fun provide um, my repo. The return type is still the interface and then in here we add a single parameter that is the type of the implementation like that then we must go to the implementation and add a constructor that's annotated with inject so that dagger knows which constructor to use when it's creating that class then i can just go and delete this other method because that this is equivalent now and i do tend to prefer this one because it's an abstract method meaning there's no implementation and it's just a little bit easier to read but anyway Say now if we wanted to have multi bindings, we could do something like this, where I can say bind my other repo. This class would be a different type altogether, but for this purpose, it doesn't matter. The important part is that we have the same return type here for both methods, right? This is now some kind of multi binding attempt, but if we try and run it, we'll see that we actually get a compile error, right? What do we get? It says my repo, which is the interface is bound multiple times, which is what we expected and it'll just list the places where you have provided it. So this kind of makes sense if you think about it because you're trying to bind multiple things to the same interface and then how does it know which implementation to provide when you actually need it. So it does kind of make sense when you think about it, but we just have to add a little bit more stuff to make it actually work. I'm just going to go and delete that method so it actually does compile after all. Now let's take a look at the multi bindings little example I have. I have an interface again, which has a provide method that just returns a string, pretty simple. And I've got two implementations which return two different strings, right, straightforward. The interesting part happens though in the dagger module. So we can do what we did previously, we just add a binds method, it's pretty much exactly the same. And I can just say bind hello world, where we return the string provider interface. And then the parameter again is the implementation type, so I'm just going to write hello world. You can do something similar for the other implementation for bar and remember when you copy and paste to do it properly. <laughs> now we have two bindings again, but we'll run into the same problem that we did just now with multi bindings. The thing we can do to get around this is to have an into set annotation on each of those two methods like that. What this will do is it will provide both of these implementations into a set of all the string providers that you can use. Let's just take a look what I mean. <laughs> so that's all you'll need to do for this part, but it changes a lot when you actually want to inject these things. So I'm going to add another field in my activity here, if I can write properly. Uh, let's just say string providers like that. The type now is going to be a set of string providers, right? Remember we said binds into set, and then we get the set injected over here. 
this will contain all the different implementations that have been bound to this interface. Now, just because I'm using Kotlin, I have to add a little extra loveliness on here. JVM suppress wildcards because you'll get compile errors if you don't. Please remember this annotation if you use Kotlin because it can save you a lot of time. And I'm just going to go and print out the string providers field that gets provided to us. Let's run this and we should have no errors and we can check the output here. Installing and there we go. We now get a list printed out or set which is surrounded by square brackets and then we have two things in here. We have foobar string provider and hello world string provider. Pretty much what we expected. And that is the most simple type of multi-binding that you can have where you just chuck a whole bunch of stuff into a set and then you get that whole set provided to you and you can then operate on that set. But, oh, before we move on, I wanted to show you an alternate way you can write this just so you know about it. If you do want to write a provides method which has a body, you can actually do that, right? You can say provides and you can say provide string providers, which is a weird thing to write. And here you can return a set itself, which is a set of string providers. And then here you can return set of, and then you would go up, go and new up them manually like that. Um, what's the other one called? <laughs> Having a blank moment like that. The difference is to a normal provides method is that you have to say elements into set like that, right? When you return a set of stuff, you say elements into set and then it will take each element that's in the set you return and then put it into the other set that you can inject. It's a lot of weird words, I'm sorry, but I hope it, it kind of makes some sense. And this allows you to get rid of these other two methods because it's equivalent. Again, it depends on what you prefer and how your code works. I prefer to, again, have abstract methods because it's a less code, there's no method body, and it's just a bit simpler to read. So I'm just going to go and delete that. Um, one limitation of using the set method, though, is that you can't really get specific elements out of the set without having to do some sort of ugly code. But luckily, the Dagger library has another way of doing that, which we can use a map for, right? Instead of using a set of stuff, we can use a map of stuff. We can do that by changing into set um, to into map like that. And if you think about a map data structure, we have a key and then we have a value, right? The key is whatever we want in the Dagger module here, and then the value will be the implementation type. So the simplest key we can have is a string key, which is provided to us by Dagger, and then you can literally just put a string in here. Let's say hello world like that. And I'm going to go and just copy this to the other method, and remember to change the key because you can't have duplicate keys. Let's just change that to foo bar. Cool, now we have set up map bindings. But remember, we're not providing a set anymore, so act activity needs to change. Instead of a set, we change it to a map as expected, where the key is a string, remember, and then the value is going to be the implementations that we have here. So I'm still going to be printing out that field, and we can just check what we get here. Open up logcat. That's still the old output, and there we go. So you'll notice it's a little bit different to the previous one where it's now a map that's being printed out. We have the key, hello world, which is mapped to a hello world string provider. Similarly, foo bar string is mapped to the foo bar provider. So you can see we now have a map being injected here, and what that allows us to do is just operate it on it like it was a normal map. You can say, I want to get some elements out of it. Say, I want to get the foo bar one out of it. Um, and then you can maybe print out that element. You'll notice that it is nullable, of course, because that's just how maps work. Um, let's just actually just see that this works. Open up the logcat again, and it'll just print out the foo bar one as expected. If you were to have some other key that doesn't exist, it will print out null because it's not in the map. So just so you are aware of how it works. Important note here about map keys is that they can be a lot more complex than what I've got here. This is the simplest one you can have. You can you can have something like a class key like this, which exists, and then you can say the key is now hello world string provider class. And you can get rid of the string key now. Let's actually do that, shall we? And the, the other one will be foo bar string provider class. Now we don't get a string key anymore over here, but we have a class itself where the class can be anything. 
and we need to change the key that we use over here. We can say foo bar string provider class. Now, if we run this again, we should just have the foo bar one being printed out. And there we go. So that's just two types of keys. You can have a string key and a class key. I do recommend checking the docs on this because you can, again, have a lot more complex keys. You can make your own key annotations here. And it does get a lot more sort of involved in this, but this is the, the most basic stuff that you that you can use. So I'm almost done. I just have one more little sort of nice to have thing that I want to show you. Say, for example, in your app, if having bindings like this is optional, right? You could, if you wanted an empty map to possibly be injected here, um, you, you have to do a little bit extra to have that work fine. So for example, if I take out these two bindings, and if I try to run the app now, you'll see that it fails because it says that the map of class to string provider cannot be provided, right? Because we took out those bindings. So Dagger doesn't know about that stuff anymore. So then it causes it to fail. But again, if I made, as I mentioned, if this is expected for you, if you want to get an empty map or an empty set provided to you, it is possible. All that you need to do is in a Dagger module, you have a multi binds method like that, which is abstract multi binds um, string providers like that. Uh, let's fix that. And then the return type is going to be the type that you're trying to inject. So it'll be a map of class um, to string provider like that. Now this should build fine because we've told dagger that it's pretty much optional. Yeah, there we go. And it installed fine. Now we get null. If we go back to the activity, right, we're trying to get something from the map, but it's null because the map is empty. Let's just actually print out the whole map so you can you can see. We'll get empty brackets now. Yeah, there we go. We now inject an empty map because we say that, hey Dagger, we do want this binding to be optional. If nothing is there, please work as expected. So again, this depends on your use case, really depends on what you're trying to achieve, but just so that you know about it, you can use this multi-binds annotation. So I think that's all I've got, actually. The, we looked at map multi-bindings and set multi-bindings and how you can write keys and all of this. And it can get a bit, a bit sort of hectic. So do take it slow, start off with some set bindings and just sort of practice a bit. Dare I say that it does end up being quite straightforward, but once you've sort of wrapped your head around what's going on here, and you've written a few yourself, I think you'll hopefully agree with me. But that's all I've got. I do have a Discord server. There's a link below if you want to come and chat about Android or about anything really. Please do consider joining that. Anyway, thanks for watching. Hope you enjoyed and cheers for now.